In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get Sega Genesis, Master System, Game Gear, 32X, and CD all set up using RetroArch. Now, this is going to be a long one, so strap in. This is going to be great. So the first thing you're going to need is RetroArch. If you don't already have it, head on over to RetroArch.com and click on the Download tab. From here, go ahead and scroll down to near the bottom and click on Nightly Builds. Now, this is a tutorial for Windows. These cores should be available on a lot of other platforms, but I'm specifically covering Windows today. So click on Windows, x86-64, and scroll all the way down to the bottom and click on RetroArch.7-zip. Now, for whatever reason, you download this, extract it, try to run it, and it doesn't work. You need to download the redistributable .7-zip up here, extract that, run that, and you should be good to go. Now that RetroArch is downloaded, go ahead and extract it using 7-zip. For demonstration purposes, I leave it on my desktop, but you are going to want to put it wherever you want it to be stored because when you run RetroArch for the first time, it does default all of its directories into itself, and if you move it later, it's going to be looking for those old directories and not work. Just to give a quick example, I'm going to open up the RetroArch folder. I'm going to scroll down and start up RetroArch. And as you can see here, it saved the config to my desktop. So to fix this, I'm just going to go ahead and close out of that. And then you're going to delete retroarc.config. And that is how you will start over from scratch if you end up moving the folder later. Anyway, go ahead and open up RetroArc. Now you can press F on your keyboard to go into full screen mode. From here, we're going to go to Online Updater, Core Updater, and we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom to the Sega section. Now, there are a couple of Sega cores we are going to download here. We're going to need two specifically. We're going to grab Genesis Plus GX. And this will handle our Master System, Game Gear, Genesis, and CD games. The second core we're going to grab is specifically for 32X, and that is Pico Drive. Now, Pico Drive also works with Master System, Genesis, uh, Sega CD, as well as 32X, but it isn't anywhere near as accurate as Genesis Plus GX, so I only use it for the 32X side of things. Anyways, once you have those downloaded, go ahead and press backspace on your keyboard twice, and you can start loading up most of your games. If you're just running Master System, Game Gear, Genesis, or 32X games, that is all you really need to do to get things up and running. You'll be able to just load them up and they will play. Quick example of a Master System game, here's Sonic the Hedgehog. Nice, right? Here's Sega Game Gear. Sega Genesis. Now those were all running through Genesis Plus GX. To do 32X, you're going to use Pico Drive. And here is 32X. And again, all of those games will run without any special setup required. They'll just be download the core, run them, you should be good to go. But if you want to load up any Sega CD or 32X CD games, there is going to be a little bit of setup required. By default, if you try to load up a Sega CD game or a 32X CD game, your emulator will crash or say fail to load content, as you can see right here. So what you're going to need to do is get a Sega CD BIOS file. So I have a video on my channel of how to rip your own Sega CD BIOS from your original Sega CD. So go ahead and check out that video. It's pretty simple. All you need is an EverDrive. So, I mean, it's not going to be the most cost effective way of doing it, but it works. Anyways, once you've sourced a Sega CD BIOS, it needs to go in your RetroArch system folder. So I'm just going to minimize RetroArch real quick by pressing F on my keyboard. Now I'm going to scroll up to the RetroArch system folder, and I'm going to put my Sega CD BIOS into the folder. Now, depending on your region, the BIOS does need to be named accordingly. So for the United States, North America region, BIOS underscore CD underscore U dot bin is what it needs to be named. If you want to see what your BIOS file needs to be named, you can go ahead and click on the show desktop menu in RetroArch here. And then you can click on any of the games you've previously loaded in Genesis Plus GX or Pico Drive. 
And if it's detecting the BIOS, it'll show up green. Great way to troubleshoot it. But it also lets you see what the other BIOS names need to be. So if you want to play Sega CD Europe games or Japanese games, it just needs to be BIOS underscore CD dot E underscore E BIOS underscore CD underscore J. I don't have any import games, so I'm just doing North America. And as you can see, there are a bunch of other optional BIOS files you can get, but they aren't necessary. They're not mandatory like the Sega CD BIOS is. One cool thing you could do though is you can actually get the lock-on ROMs for Sonic and Knuckles, but it's really complicated to do it this way, so I honestly just recommend downloading the ROM patches and patching your games instead. Anyways, now that this BIOS file is placed, you can start loading up your Sega CD games. Now again, for default, Sega CD games definitely use Genesis Plus GX. And there you go, there's Sega CD games up and running using Genesis Plus GX. I'm really bad at this game. Now perhaps one of the coolest things that RetroArch has added in the last few months is the ability to play your physical Sega CD games using the Genesis Plus GX Core. So if you have a huge collection of physical Sega CD games and you want to play them from the discs, you can go ahead and load your core, select Genesis Plus GX, go down to load disc, and select your disc drive and your game will boot, and you can play your entire Sega CD library directly from your discs, and it works really well. Another great option is that you can actually dump your Sega CD games using RetroArch Now. If you just go down to Dump Disc, and then select your disc drive, it will rip your games. Now, the process can take a while depending on the condition of your game and how big the game actually is. So just be patient. If you have a large Sega CD library, this will take a while, but it gives you really high quality rips. After your game is finished being ripped, you can find it in the downloads folder in RetroArch and it will be named really weird, unfortunately. So you are going to have to rename it. So RetroArch's image dumper doesn't do merged bin files. So you could end up with a lot of bins just like this in Sonic CD. There are so many. So you're going to need to rename each and every single one of these bins Sonic CD if you don't want them to have those weird numbers. And after you're done renaming all of those, you need to make sure that you rename them in the Q file as well, otherwise the image will not work. But after you finish, your image file will run and it will run well, and you have a very authentic dump that you've done yourself. Congrats! Now, unfortunately, playing games from actual discs only works with Sega CD and Genesis Plus GX. It does not work with Pico Drive. So if you have 32X CD games you want to play directly from disc, unfortunately, you cannot do it. But thankfully, since Pico Drive loads up the same Sega CD BIOS in the same format as Genesis Plus GX, you don't have to have two of those files in your system folder to play your 32X CD games. And that's Sega CD 32X. Now, the last thing I want to show you before I send you on your merry way to play your games at your leisure is how to set up different controllers within both cores. The Sega Genesis had a ton of different controllers available for it, so you can actually emulate a majority of those controllers within Genesis Plus GX and Pico Drive. So I'm just going to go down to my history file here, load up Sonic the Hedgehog 3 for Genesis Plus GX. And now if I press F1 on my keyboard, that takes us into the RetroArch quick menu and I can scroll down to controls. Now I'll press enter to go into this and scroll down to port one controls. And now we could change the device type that we're using for our emulated Genesis. So by default, it automatically tries to detect what the game's looking for, whether that's a three button or a six button controller or even a light gun. If you don't want to rely on auto, you could set this manually. You could play, you could play your Genesis games with the three button pad or a six button pad. This is great if you want to actually torment yourself on Street Fighter by trying to play with the original 3-button pad. Again, I say it's torture yourself. Don't do it. Please don't. 
You can also emulate the Master System controllers. Then there are an additional number of Genesis controllers you can set up here. And then of course, light guns for Master System and Genesis games. There is even support for a Genesis mouse. Now I'm going to load back up into Pico Drive real quick and press F1 on the keyboard again. Now Pico Drive works a little bit differently. We're actually just going to go down to the options menu here and we have our input device selection in the options menu instead of in the controller menu. So for Pico Drive, you can select the three button pad or the six button pad and that's it. There aren't as many options for Pico Drive. Once again, this is why you only do Pico Drive for 32X and 32X CD games. Part of the reason why. And that's pretty much it for getting your Sega Master System, Game Gear, Genesis, CD, 32X games up and running in RetroArch. Not a lot of setup required, but it does require that one BIOS file for Sega CD and Sega CD 32X games. For those of you just looking how to get your games up and running in RetroArch, that's it. That's all you need this video for. Go ahead and uh, start playing your games. For anyone looking for some optional steps, I'm going to go over those now, including how to set up a playlist for all of your games, as well as a look at some of the core options available in both Genesis Plus GX and Pico Drive. But the first thing we're going to do is set up our playlist, because using the file browser really sucks. So let's not do it. Let's make a playlist. Go on down to Show Desktop Menu, press OK when this comes up, and we are going to go ahead and start with Master System. So go ahead and right click over here, New Playlist. So here we're going to type in Sega space dash space master system space dash space mark III for three and press enter and that will give you a nice Sega master system logo over here. That way it looks nice. Yay master system. Hi. Now from here right click add folder and navigate to where you have your games stored. So for me, again, for demonstration purposes, I have all my stuff on the desktop. So Master System, Games, Select Folder. Now for the core, I'm going to select Genesis Plus GX, and the database is Sega Master System Mark III. And it found all of my games in that folder. Yay. My whole whopping two. All right, whatever. Let's move on to Sega Genesis. So new playlist. Sega space dash space Mega Drive space dash space Genesis. Really annoying that it has to be like that, but whatever. And that gives us the Genesis playlist with the icon over here. And now again, right click over here, add folder, scroll to where your Genesis games are stored, select folder, core, Genesis plus GX, database, Sega Mega Drive Genesis. Okay. And there's all of the Sega Genesis games I own. Next up, Game Gear, new playlist. This one's the easiest of them all. Sega, space dash space, Game Gear. Done. Sweet. Same deal, add folder. Find your Game Gear games. Core, Genesis plus GX. Sega Game Gear for the database. Nice. Now let's do Sega CD. It's a little bit more complicated than these past three have been. So let's first make the playlist, new playlist. Sega space dash space mega sp dash CD space dash space Sega CD and now for the Sega CD playlist we are going to add files instead of the folder because if you add the folder it will add listings for your queue and every bin file that you have so again, you saw how many bin files were in that Sonic CD game dump. We do not want listings for every single one of those. That is not okay. So add files, go to where your Sega CD games are stored, and then select the queue files for each of your games. So core, Genesis plus GX, database, Sega CD. And then repeat for all of your games. Now, there is also multi-disc games available for Sega CD and Sega CD 32X. So I'm going to show you how to do those real quick. So I'm going to open up my Sega CD games folder, and I'm going to go into Night Trap. This is a two-disc game. So what you're going to want to do is make a new text file, name it Night Trap, or whatever the frick you want to name it. I don't, whatever, it's up to you, yeah. Now we're going to open that up, and we're going to copy the Q file names into this text document and then save it. Now we're going to close the text document and we're going to rename the extension for this file M3U. This is a playlist file 
and when you add it into RetroArch, it will know that there are those two discs that you put into it, and you can select between them when you need to. And now when I go to add files, I'm going to scroll to the Night Trap folder and add the M3U. Core, Genesis Plus GX, Database, Sega CD. And that is how you will make multi-disc game playlist entries. Now for Sega 32X, new playlist, and we're going to type in Sega space dash space 32X. This one's nice and easy. Thank goodness. And you got to love that it's the Sega Genesis with the 32X on there. Like, look at that. It's awesome. Anyway, same deal for 32X games. Rather than add the folder, we're going to add files. If you don't have any Sega 32X CD games, you can go ahead and add the folder. That'll be the simplest option but I have this 32X version of Night Trap in my folder, so I'm not gonna do that because again, it will add multiple entries for that game and I just don't want it. So I'm gonna add in Doom, Core, Pico Drive, Database 32X, and then repeat for all of your games for in that folder. And now again, for multi-disc games, we can set up that playlist, so I'm gonna open my 32X game folder and I'm going to make a new folder for Night Trap real quick. And I'm going to dump both of all four of these files in there. And then I'm going to open that up, make a new text file. Name it Night Trap 32X. Then I'm going to open that up. And we're going to copy the Q file names once again. Save the text document. Close it and rename the extension M3U. And now we're going to add that file to the playlist. So Nitrap 32x core Pico Drive database 32x. And that is a playlist entry for all five of those systems. Now that these playlists are made, you can further pretty them up by adding box arts. So if you have box arts already downloaded, you can just drag them over onto this blank space here, or you can right click on each entry and tell it to download all thumbnails for this playlist. Now games do need to be named a specific way for the cover arts to be downloaded. If they aren't named right, it won't find them. So in example of my 32X playlist here, it found it for Doom. Knuckles Chaotix, Star Wars Arcade, Virtua Fighter, but not Night Trap. My Night Trap playlist isn't named right. So what I like to do in this case is head on over to GameFAQs, search for the game I'm looking for, in this case Night Trap for 32X, and there is a media section here that has a bunch of user uploaded images. So typically you can find a pretty nice quality box art. So here we are, there's the Sega CD 32X version of Night Trap. Right click save as, put it on my desktop, and now I'm just going to go ahead and drag that onto the box art part over here. And now we have the box art for Night Trap. And then of course you can repeat the same process for all of your other playlists. So I really did like the way I had the Sega CD games name, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. Anyways, to get these playlists to show up within RetroArch, you're just going to go ahead and close down RetroArch and then start it back up. And now over on the left hand side of the screen we have wonderful playlist entries for all five of these Sega systems, complete with controller icons or the system itself. And if you click on a playlist, it'll have little cartridges or disc images, and then the cover art will show up over on the right hand side of the screen, and it looks so freaking awesome. And then to run any of these playlist entries, you just click on it and hit run. But now let's go ahead and go over some of the core options that are available for Genesis Plus GX within RetroArch. We press F1 on the keyboard, we'll be brought to the quick menu, and we can scroll on down to options. Now I'm not going to go over everything, I'm just going to go over what I think people might want to mess with. So, system hardware, this will emulate the different Sega systems that are available within the core. It should automatically work with auto. I haven't experienced it not detecting games properly, so I'm mentioning this just in case you do encounter such an issue. If you like to play homebrew or certain ROM hacks, you might need to turn off system lockups because this tries to emulate proper Genesis crashing. If you're going to be playing a ton of Sega CD games, I do recommend changing the CD system BRAM to per game. That way every game gets its own save file instead of them all being shared on the small Sega CD internal memory. Now for all of my Master System Genesis audio files out there, you can actually change the sound chips that are available for emulation, you can turn on the FM synthesizer for Master System. 
and you can change which FM synthesizer is being used during the emulation here for Genesis games. There's a few different options available. Take a listen to each one, see what you like. For me, I just leave it on the default MAME YM2612. I'm not a big Genesis audiophile. I don't really notice much of a difference in them personally, just because I didn't grow up with it. I can't tell. There are a lot of options out there for all of you hardcore Genesis fans to be able to play through and see which one sounds best to you. And then there's also, of course, a bunch of other sound options here as well that you can mess with. But now we have a couple of cool filters that are built into Genesis Plus GX to try to emulate different types of CRT sources. So you can do this in black and white. Oh, that's weird, that really is a throwback. Then of course there's composite video. This is how a lot of people probably remember replaying Genesis as it was a composite console. To be quite honest, the Genesis relied on composite video blurring for a lot of its transparency effects. It would checkerboard parts of its renderer and then it would rely on the composite video source to blur those together to make it look like things were actually transparent. Then of course there's S-Video and RGB. And I have to say, this looks pretty authentic to my RGB setup through the OSSC, I like it. And then of course you can just leave that off and have just the native pixels at their best. The next one that's really freaking cool is the LCD ghosting. So if you're playing Game Gear games or you played a ton of Genesis games on the Nomad, you can emulate the blur that was on those systems. And it's pretty gross. Like, it's authentic looking to how my Game Gear looks, I guess. But, man, it's crazy. Like, it's pretty cool. Great effect to have. Just look at this in motion, though, man. Like, it's insane. Honestly, I don't really expect many of you out there to play like this, but I think it's pretty cool to see. Like, this is neat. <laughs> it's neat to get this emulated like this. I mean, how many people dedicate themselves to mods to get rid of this type of ghosting right now? And here I am doing an emulator, trying to make it look as ghosting as possible. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Sorry, I, I, I like irony. What can I say? I think it's great. By the way, the Lion King's not hard. Just saying. Anyway, moving on. Gonna turn that ghosting off real quick. Next up is the border option. A lot of Genesis games have a lot of garbage data around the side, so you can add in a colored border to try to overcome those. I don't like this border personally. I don't think it looks that great. As you can see here, I just don't think this looks good, so I personally leave it off. The next option is Light Gun Crosshair. I like to have this on if I'm playing Light Gun games with the mouse, just so I can actually see where I'm aiming. But it makes things way too freaking easy, but hey, that's kind of it's kind of what you get for trying to play Light Gun games with the mouse, I guess. And then you could choose if you're using a touchscreen or your mouse right here for Light Gun games. Can you imagine playing Light Gun games with the touchscreen? Like, how simple is that? Now, if you're playing a Genesis game that has quite a bit of slowdown, you can also overclock the emulated Genesis CPU. It can break something, so leave it at 100 when you're booting games, and then you can turn it up from there. And now this one is cool. For Master System and Game Gear games, and some Genesis games, you can disable the sprite limits, so there will be flickering sprites when too many get on screen at a time. This will get rid of that flicker completely. So, pretty neat. And now for our core options over on Pico Drive, I'm gonna load back up into Doom real quick. And then again, you can press F1 on the keyboard, go down to Options. So we have the input devices that we outlined a little bit earlier. There's the no sprite limit. And then you can also emulate the Mega CD RAM cart for your 32X CD games. Unlike uh, Genesis Plus GX, you can't give every game its own save file really for the 32X CD games. So maybe it is a good idea to turn that on. And then we have overclocking again. We can choose a percentage of which to overclock this by. Again, it can break things, so leave it off. And then if you have slowdown, just turn it up incrementally from there. 
And then for my audio files, you can then again choose to enable the low pass filter to more accurately emulate the Model 1 Genesis sound. And then of course you can change the sound quality. 44100 is the best. And that's pretty much it as far as emulating this slew of Sega systems is concerned. It isn't hard to get set up initially, you do need the Sega CD BIOS, and then playlist setup can be a bit of a hassle considering they have to be named so weirdly, but once you get it all up and running, it runs really well. These are great emulators for Sega. Pico Drive may not be the best, but hey, at least you can play 32x games on your PC for all of you that want to play 32x games on your PC, I guess. Hey, I like 32x. What can I say? I'm weird like that. But anyway, thank you so much again for watching today's tutorial. I cannot express enough gratitude to each and every one of you for all of the time you spend on my channel watching this stuff. It really helps me out. Thank you so much. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that sub button, that like dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. And if you'd like to further help support the channel, you can always click that join button here on YouTube or check out my Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. As always, I am just so eternally grateful for your consideration and for those of you who have already done so, thank you so very much. You are my freaking champions. I cannot believe your generosity. Like, you blow me away. Thank you so much. But that's going to do it for today. Until next time, stay awesome and we will see you all back next video.